The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Bowser Chapman on this Tuesday, the 27th of June. And we're looking at the Dow up 61 at 32,778, attempting to cross the Rubicon right here. 33,871 is the number to cross. Just to say that we can at least have a, a pretty decent bounce as the nine period moving average is still over the 14th. Question came in. Uh, what do I consider a sell signal? So the definition for me is that a sell signal starts the initial, uh, the technicals that I'm looking at have given enough evidence to say that there's a turnaround and it's the start of possibly a deeper turnaround. So that's either a, a, a sell signal and then if it gets upgraded to a sell mode, that's a definition that says that at that particular point, the price has dropped enough to say that it has reached the criteria, just like uh, many people think that a 20% move down is really a correction, it is a serious move down. In this particular, and it's, all it does is gives you a title. It doesn't say, oh my God, sell, sell low. That means just everything's going down. It means that the criteria has been met at this particular point. So the Dow, <clears throat> because it went under the 34,588. Uh, Chapman Wave Roman candle, red inverted Roman candle, closed gap down and then closed down sharply on the 17th, on the 20th, 16th of Friday was the high, the 20th was was the uh, next trading day. So um, that gave another Chapman Wave red Roman candle and we went halfway into the wick and we, we tested and closed just above the low. We went to below the low of that uh, day of the 20th. And we've been down ever since, except today, trying to make a new. This is the first time we've got actually an A with a, with a just a pop above the previous high. That's the first thing. So sell signal, for instance, let me just show you here. If the S&P today, instead of having a decent up day, closes under yesterday's low, that says to me that's a sell signal. If, in fact, it closes two sessions, this is part of the criteria I use, Underneath, it could all happen in one day. Underneath yesterday's low of 4328, I'd probably say below 4327. Um, I will say that the daily chart, not the weekly chart, I'm going one step at a time, the daily chart has gone from a sell signal and probably I'll say immediately that it's upgraded to a sell mode, but I do like the nine period moving average to close pink underneath the 14 period moving average to really confirm a sell mode. In the case of the Dow, um, the reason why I haven't those criteria were all met except for the nine period moving average under moving under the 14 is that there's residual strength. But I see that we've made for six sessions after the turnaround that Friday, the 20 uh, Friday, the 16th, we had one, two, three, four, five lower lows and lower highs. That to me, all of that says it's just a slow grind to the downside, it's not a smash. It's added up. It's cumulative. 34,588 to 34,005. What was that yesterday? Uh, 34,610, 1,000 points. That gives me, at, on the daily chart, a sell mode. But the reason that I haven't yet done even uh, confirmed that there is a sell signal, I'm still calling it GSASH, the alternate count at 44, 48.47, the high of the 16th, is because that nine is still very much above the 14 period moving average. But at the end of the day, we could start to see, actually I should mention, we are short the S&P. Uh, so, as we're looking at this QQQ, this has held so much better, but it did close yesterday under the 14. But look how much work has to be done for the green uh, nine period moving average to move under it. So I'm ignoring all the weekly charts because those weekly charts, even though there's a peak D, in the weekly chart of the Dow, I'm just for the moment, I go one step at a time. And I haven't got the conviction yet to say that the S&P um, and the QQQ have given me sell signals. They're really close. One is within 
I'd say fractions of a sell signal. That's the S and P. So my my analysis to go short the S and P a couple of days ago was based on a whole bunch of other factors and the fact that we had used the U D O W. I we have also bought the S the short three times short the Dow at this particular point. I just want you to separate the two just so that I can think a little bit more clearly. Uh, but there's a chance that on this particular move. I will be considering if I see the technicals deteriorating and by the end of the day, there isn't a rally to kind of save the day with the Dow up. Uh, it's now up 53. It's holding very nicely. The S&P uh, did pull back to negative. Now it's up eight. So I'm watching this very closely because it, it's a process. That's what I like to say. So with that said, the IWM is in fact in a sell mode. Closed four times now underneath the 14 period moving average. Look at this. We are within fractions of the nine period moving average flipping negative in the IWM and the Russell 2000. So let's go to, I want you to go to next gold. Uh, gold, um, you can see once we flip negative right here on the 16th of May, uh, that was continued the next day. So around about 2015, went negative. Here we are at 1925. So it's 100 points down. And it's still showing negative signs. And look at the weekly chart. You finally got an S, meaning that the weekly nine period moving average uh, has crossed underneath the 14 period moving average. But we have to wait till Friday's close. It's a weekly chart. You can't talk about it intra-week. You have to wait for the close. Look at silver, SI. Well, it's got a little bit better chart than gold. But that's also, I think, because it, it's got a, a practical usage. I think in electric vehicles, in the batteries. So maybe that's the way, uh, the reason why it's holding a little bit better. It's up 0.03 at 22.85. Uh, underneath the 14 period moving average of 23.25, it doesn't look all that great. High grade copper, high grade copper is pulling back from that peak F. We discussed this the other day. We had John from Philly calling, and we looked at um, um, high grade copper continuous contract. And I said uh, that nine period moving average. Uh, it's still very strong over the 14, but it got repelled three times out of four, five sessions at the at the 200 period exponential moving average. Be careful because it looks to me like it wants to test. And I think I said the low of the 12th of June, which is 3.73. Right now, the low of the day today is 3.75. A weekly chart is not looking all that great. What did I want you to do next? Oh, I wanted to go to crude oil. Oh, I didn't do the doll. Yeah, crude oil, there's your dreaded H pattern. What's the dreaded H pattern? That's this pattern I always talk about. And we're going to see a lot of that in the coming week or so. That's where it comes down sharply and makes a peak A or a B and then turns down and takes out the left side low. Well, it's done that. It did that once here, yeah, that peak D is doing it again. This is peak A right here. Let me just type that in so that you know what we're looking at. There's your peak A. It's actually holding quite well, but definitely looks weak. I holding well in the sense that it's taken one, two, three, four, four, four sessions to try to take out the left side low of one of that was uh twelve for June row sixty six point nineteen ninety one of the continuous front. I'll be back in a moment. I wanna see if dreaded H has worked here in the uh, one minute chart. Look, there's your dreaded H failed, now it's trying to come back. We'll be right back. That's the chapter nine. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, so let me just uh, show you something else that I want to do, uh, talk about uh, here. Oh, so a question came in about Google. I'm going to Google. This is not the trading shares. This is Google Alphabet C shares search engine. Uh, 139.53 was the peak D high around about June the 6th or so. What was that? June the, June the, the 7th. And here's your dreaded H, the pattern I was just talking about right now. And it's gone below it. And the nine period moving average yesterday turned negative. It's a peak F, and I haven't changed the, uh, the notation yet because I felt very strongly that that D, with this head and shoulders potential right here, taking out the neckline, there's a, and not one of my favorite patterns, but I just wanted to talk about it, is, is quite forbidding. It, it just says, you know what, um, at least this gap, which is the gap from the, the high was the, six, the 10th of May, at 113.51, next day the gap low is 114.93. So my thinking is that we could get into this area. All right. So I, I know whether, whether uh, looking for an entry price to add, <clears throat> I'd hold off just a little bit zip. I'd wait for I'd wait for a little bit more of a pullback. And one of the reasons is. Even in the stocks that have been hammered, for instance, we have a stock that we've taken lots and lots of profits in, um, kept a core position, <clears throat> want to add to it, missed by nine cents after a 20% decline, missed by nine cents yesterday getting into it. And I said there's a, a potential two to three points that could be, be uh, had on the upside, but there's a good chance that it's going to come back and do some retesting. So uh, if we didn't get it by 10 minutes past 10 this morning, because we missed it by nine cents yesterday, we've missed it. And I'm not I'm not chasing anything right now because the tide has turned. Look, yes, Google. Let me show you another question came in. Could I look at Myrna? So Myrna, I always say Myrna. I used to have a Myrna in my class in high school, way back. I can't remember her last name, but I do remember her. Moderna Inc. Biotech, COVID, many other trials going on. Uh, the COVID days are gone. August 2021, it goes to 497.49. It's trading at 119.01 right now. <clears throat> I did have a left side, right side potential, but it took longer than I had written in. I should have gone to a particular candle. I didn't. I went to that failure high right there, the week of the 21st of January at 198.86. 
use that as the measurement to the right side. There's nothing absolutely clear here, but it's almost at the low of 115.03 that was made back in September of 2022. Now, what was the low the other day? The low was 117.23. So it's really close. This is the this is exactly the area. You see this base right here. Within 10 points of that base, Moderna should start to at least attempt to have a pretty decent rally. And what would the rally do? It might be a rally to get back to where we are today at 118. And then if it holds, 127 is the pink nine period moving average in the weekly chart. I don't know about 132, the 40 period. It's just in the wrong area at the wrong time. And I don't know what they've got on the uh, in play at this particular point in terms of the FDA approvals, all that, or, or anything to do with their research. And this A pattern uh, in the monthly chart still has the nine period very weak. The MACD is very weak. The on balance volume is holding okay. Stochastic is quite weak at 19 percent. Oh, it needs a lot of work to change the technicals to, for a sustained rate. It could have a bounce. But I'd be real careful. So if you have a longer a longer term position, much lo uh, lower down, I'd say that's fine as a long term position. I think at some point there's a chance that Moderna does become like the Pfizer's and the Eli Lilly's and the pharma companies, or even the biotechs. Like um, you know, let's see what an Amgen's doing. Amgen is uh, had a nice bounce by a pharma. It's gone to a peak B and now it's stalling. Yeah, it's just been tough for some of these. And uh, the irony is that the the pharmaceutical companies like Eli Lilly, look, LLY, um, all-time all high as we speak, making an all-time high. I don't know if Merck is making an all-time high. No, it did make the high at 119.65. The last high was made uh, back in uh, May, I think it was, of, tw of this year. Uh, it plummeted down to 106, and now it's at 112. So this is peak A, this is peak B. Yeah, uh, so a bit of stalling motion here. So yeah, I'd be I'd be kind of careful. I wouldn't want to add the second position just yet. Um, most most importantly, the second position, I don't want to have it so that now you're averaging down. In other words, the second should, position should be a plan. The plan should be. I'm getting in here. I, let's just say you got in after the big move to the 497. You got in most in the in the 113s. That's I don't know where you got in, but if you're in a um, if you're in a positive situation right now, I don't think I would add because it's just been in a failure pattern. It hasn't shown any any sign of strength that at least I can monitor and say, hey, look at this. It's going to have a surprise move to the upside. That's sustainable. A pop, look, it has pops before, but it doesn't go over the 14-period moving areas in the weekly chart. So I just be real careful with that. Longer term, if you have done your own homework and you like it, then I'm just saying, if you're asking my opinion, I'd hold off on the second position. Uh, I, I don't want to be averaging down. In other words, that would be the plan, that you're in a great position, you had a big move up, and now you've got to move down, and this is where you want to get your second entry. That's different to averaging down. All right. So let's see, we've got that. So a question came in. Could I look at the uh, 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 NEO? N I O. So NEO made a peak C. It looked like it was holding well enough to go to a D, but then look what happened. If the stochastic goes for just a couple of bars above 80% and then quickly turns down with the on balance volume, just be real careful. It's saying to you, no, not enough strength. Yeah, I did draw this in a long time ago as one of, I, I believe, I don't know if it's accurate, but I drew this in as one of uh, Larry uh, Pesavento's godly patterns and it had a very nice bounce off that, but now it's taken out my dreaded H goes to lowercase m. It took it out decisively. So that's Neo. I'd just be real careful if you're trading for intraday stuff. Yeah, a little bounce. Yeah, the bounce can go a little bit further, but that was just too deep a pullback for me to feel comfortable to say, hey, great, I'd go long. No, I'd, I'd be careful. I just want to check this out here. This is the uh, E-mini. So there's always two fighting patterns. Here it was a cup formation that was fighting the arch formation, the arch formation one. And then what happened? It went to peak A, peak B. It's in leg C right now. 
This is a nice read. You see, there are buyers there, and that's what I was saying to subscribers. We want to be careful. There was one position, as I say, that we wanted to buy. If we didn't get it by 10, 10 this morning, I just said, forget about it. And I had even thought of going along the Dow via the UDOW just for a trade. But that's kind of conflict. Yeah, I am short. Short's working, okay. And I want to go long. Uh, I don't want to mix apples and oranges. Uh, Adobe, Adobe, yeah, I looked at Adobe earlier. Let me tell you something about some of these stocks. ADBE. Uh, but I'm thinking of shorting. Oh, shorting Adobe. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that in that. <laughs> shorting Adobe. Yes, I was looking at this. In fact, I'll do a little bit of, do I need to do any work? I think I've already got all notated already. It's one of those Google stocks, etc. Yes, I want to talk about this particular pattern. And that will answer the question about sell signal going to sell mode. I'll be back. Dow's up 103, S&P sub 60. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So I had a good question about a two-click session. Uh, this has got a second peak D here. Um, underneath the previous high, I don't really like that. That's a that's a pity that it did that. I would have loved it if it just popped above uh, 4388. It could still do that, but this is not the pattern that I really like. But it is the nine is over the 14, the one minute chart. And look at this, the 10 minute chart. So the question came in is a two click session right in this area at 830. Um, 
at 8.30 when the low was 43.72 to 43.74. That was the best click. But you had to th sit through two big moves to the upside and then giving it almost all back. It, this, would, this would be a very frustrating two-click session. Um, and now you're at 43.83 after all that. Uh, it's, it's, this is a tough one. But absolutely, if if you're in at the 74 level and you had a maybe a two-point stop, uh, that the low that was made right here at 1020 was uh, 43.74.50. So uh, this is a real, this is a tough one because the bias I said to subscribers this morning, the bias is towards the upside today. It, it was a little bit yesterday, and it's a lot more today. And I expected that leg E, a uh, leg gray leg A in the um, in the Dow. Let me just go to this here and see what we've got. Yeah, so we've got a gray leg A. You see right there, and uh, but look, the nine is still over the fourteen. So there is residual strength. But okay, here's something I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to get to some of the questions that have come in. I I showed this chart. It's a chart that I find I cannot put in the data that would make it a fabulous uh, platform because some of it is very visual. And if you were to do this, if you had to um, do it with, you know, computerized, in other words, you had some kind of a program, there are just too many ifs and ands and all, but visually, look, it's so easy. Back in November of 2022, I said, we are in a period that has this hovering over us, this whole issue of um, yields, uh, many big questions, inflation, just it's just a potpourri of things, and that's the dark news cloud cover. At any point, the Dow ignores it. The same information on one day is ignored, and the same information the next day is very important. And that says this whole area right here is, is a bad area. It's a bad area for news. Every time we get in there, something comes up. Well, I'm going to keep, and I said, I'm just going to keep here, as opposed to putting in little squares or rectangles, I'm just keeping this as the huge thing that's kept this market from making new all-time highs. To break above, in other words, I'll use the Dow right now. If the, if the Dow on any day in the next uh, six to eight weeks can even touch 35,000, we're out of this. You're, you're, then I can go back to putting in little, little squares and they get shorter term, uh, uh, nuanced. But at this particular t point, you can see how the market's being repelled every time it gets into the 33,500 to 33,000. Uh, 800 area, or 30, sorry, 34,800, hasn't been able to get to that 35,000 level. But that's that's hovering over us. But I'm slowly seeing enough evidence to say, within the context of this dark news cloud cover, things are lightening up a lot. In fact, I, the reason why I haven't gone fully negative and, and chosen particular stocks other than selective stocks that I think are coming down sharply is because I see a rotational correction going on. I still see PAVE. I'm going to get to Adobe in a minute. I still see, uh, oh, I typed in the wrong place. I still see PAVE, which is the ETF global. You've got to click on that and then it'll work. There it is. Okay. I still see it as, look at that, all-time high. As we're speaking, this is the Global X U.S. infrastructure, and that's the reason why, just for a moment there, I thought, is it even possible that we are looking at a potential slide right now that is not those big multi-triple-digit down days in the Dow, and that we've really just consolidated, we've got to consider this more a consolidation, and that's really what I'm thinking. And that's the reason why we have a small position in a short, in, in a three times short, we have. Um, we are trying to get another one, which looks like that area could could be due for some rotational correction. But if Pave is making an all-time high, look at this trend line. The monthly, it's gone right to the door of the inside track repellent zone, and this is actually. Oh, well, let me just check. Is this a D? Oh ho ho! No, this is a, this is a, still a C. The weekly chart is still extremely positive. 
All right. I wanted to just show you why I can't get just over over enthusiastic on the short side, but on the on the long side, uh, very selectively. Yes, we want to be adding to positions, and we want brand new positions. I've, I've told the subscribers what in. In, in the next couple of weeks, there are going to be really good buys coming up. And we want to be ready for them. We're already planning which ones and why and where. And that's going to be really important. So uh, just go back to this e-mini for a second, then we'll go to Adobe. Yeah, so this is gone. There's the high that was made at peak F top uh, at 940 this morning at 4390. Yeah, hard to see. 4389. And this high right here was 43.88.25 at a peak E. So I, I I do see some residual strength today, and I, that's going to be flurries of buying. I don't know how much they can take. I, this 10-minute chart should go to a D. It should therefore go to 30, 43, probably 92, 93, and then we'll see what happens after that. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's get back to our story. The question came in about Adobe. I-D-B-E. Adobe, yeah. So, the, look, you see like a head and shoulders pattern. It's not exactly a carry gain if you had to, uh, had to have a program. And you'd probably, that program would have a tough time. And all I'm going to do in this case is usually at a peak, yeah, I make it red and the little plus sign because that's where other things can happen. But at the same time, you've got a chapter with instant restart here. But if we take out... 460 at any point we're at 483.01 460 wait a minute this is adobe now if we take out this low right here 472.32 in the next couple of days then i think it's going to be pulling back quite sharply so the question is uh what was it yeah okay two clicks in Well, where was the question on Adobe? Oh, thinking of shorting Adobe, want to be near the 492.75 area. Your thoughts? Yes. So it's at 483. Now, the big problem here is that if Adobe closes over this candle right here, the 495.55 high of the 21st of June, it can make its way towards that high that was made at 518.74 uh, on the 16th. So I'd be a little careful. Yeah, I agree with you. This looks like it wants to be one of those that's short, especially with that alternate count F, the doji candle last week, and a very small candle so far this week. But there is recent strength that time is still way above the key. So I, I'd be a little careful. I guess I'll back out of the The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee 
at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, we're back. Uh, and so, uh, GP says, uh, 2003 WFC ready to go March bottom with July will this pull back trade okay and then says um, subject Len XHB key KRE Hindenburg type activity that could lead to crash similar to 2003 question mark you know you could always get something like that. It could be it could be anything. It could be political. It could be uh, instrumental in uh, how we are perceiving what the wars you know going like in and um, over in the Ukraine. Let me just get this as I'm looking at this. So let's just go through this. Len, so yes, Len, it's done spectacularly. Here's your leg D. We were missing the leg D. There's that leg D in the Chapman methodology. That's what you want from a, a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, a D. You've got a D in the daily, D in the weekly, a C in the I, – I have to call that C at this point, but I really should say it's really an E slash C because we never took out the low in the 20 area from 2020. So this could be a continuation pattern, but everything about it looks fresh. It looks good. The stochastic in the monthly is 89%. Everything looks good. So I'm calling that a C in the monthly in Lennar. Uh, what was it? X XHB. I've done this so many times. I don't think I've got it now because I, I got shut down suddenly. Yeah, blank chart. God, ugh. this is just frustrating as anything. So here we go. Peak A, peak B. This is almost like the S&P. Oh, my goodness. This is peak A. Peak B monthly, and then inside we've got an A. Remember, if you get an inside peak A, B, C, and a D under the previous B, that negates that B. It's fulfilled other obligations by getting to a D. So this is still very strong. This is the XHB, which is the uh, the spider. Okay, let me just get this right here. This is the spider home builders. I tend to use the, not as a trading vehicle, but I tend to use the HGX, that is the Philadelphia Housing Sector um, Index. This has gone to a leg D date. It looks like the others. Yeah, so let me just answer that question. I think it's a question for me because I had a question mark there. And we've got others to come. So let me just do this. So this is a G slash B in the... Uh, in the weekly chart, with all the technicals very strong, it's a leg C in the daily in the monthly chart. 538.36 was the all-time high back in May of 2021. We're at 539.81 as we speak. We're at 539.52. It's a new all-time high, and this, you see, this C right here. That C is an overlapping wave with that peak B. This is what I was hoping we would see in the S&P in 2023. There's still time. We'll see what happens here. That is really powerful. That says we should still go to a D, and the lip of 538.36 should be tested a couple of times. But this is powerful. This is a Chapman wave. In fact, I'll type it in here because 
Uh, I must make it absolutely sure that I've got a leg C. Yes, I do. Leg C. Oh, my. This is worth doing and taking a little moment for. This is live on Tiger Financial News Network. So we've broken the Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation, gone to the upside, taken out all the left side resistance points. Um, I would normally have gone like this from here, 538.36, to uh, the low, which was right there, and had a measured move, Chapman Wave Bar symmetry, left side, right side, price, time match. You parallel, make that green. Oh my. Oh my. Look at this. I think it's early. Even. Oh, it's one month early. One month early, and we've broken it to the upside. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is either we're going to double top now, but in leg C in an overlapping wave. So this is what I would normally type in. I would, you, you've seen me do it with other charts. Certainly my subscribers have. I put Chapman Wave overlapping wave. Actually, I usually squash it so that I can get it in. Wave to leg D. I type in and I usually make it gray. So I, I'm not in that camp. I'm sorry. I just can't be in that camp about a crash uh, at this particular point. I think if I'm right, I suspect that we're still going to get that major move that gets everybody into the market. The the IB the IAI, which is the here we go. The IAI, which is the broker dealer ETF. We're still on from 45s that hit. Uh, the 92 area actually went all the way to 106 and now it's pulled back sharply. Um, I suspect that this particular index will make all time highs in the 118, 122 area at some point when we get, if I'm correct in saying that we haven't got the hysteria that, that you get when you're making serious major market tops. And I suspect that's going to happen. And there's no question in my mind that the um, artificial intelligence sector itself will be probably one of the leaders, one of the culprits. So that's what I'm looking at. So I don't see that we've already had pretty serious uh, smash to the downside. Let's go to uh, KRE. KRE, we once had it. We got out of it for a little bit of a profit. Here it is going from, this is a peak D in the 40 five-ish area right there. That's a down arrow. That's a sell signal upgrade to a sell mode. Even if there's a decent rally here, that was a designation at that particular time. We haven't taken out this left side low of, of June back in the 38 area. So you're at 40.73 up 64 cents today. But look at that weekly chart. That is not a great looking chart at all in the weekly chart. The XLF, oh, he didn't mention the XLF. I'll just do that right now. Oh, Hindenburg, huh? Yeah, now I know that you're just quoting other people, but I'm just saying I don't see it. I might be completely wrong. WFC is Wells Fargo. It went to peak A, B, C, D, E, F over there, under the 200 period moving, above the 200 period moving average, now under the 200 period moving average. Um, it's just a struggling, struggling. Uh, it has made a peak D, I believe. I did, had noted, notated all the banks, the uh, money center banks. I just don't have it right here, but I'll just do this in a split second. A, B, C. There's your D with the down arrow in the monthly. This is Wells Fargo. So the weekly has made the dreaded H. Now it's trying to come out of it. That could be good. But it says that the left side high in the 49s, uh, it's going to 48, 49 is going to be tough to break on this move. It needs more. It needs to build more strength. So no, my answer is I don't see it. Uh, you could be 100 percent correct. But at this particular time, I don't see it. I would have been seeing it if right now we are down. Look, let me just show you something. Let's go to the QQQ. If the QQQ at this particular point was at the 352 to 350 area. After just a week and a little bit of trading, I'd say, oh, that's really bad. But it's just, it's just it's going to dive to the downside. And that says that the IP briefing average over the 14, at any point, it can actually bounce again. 
So I'm just letting the tech with the major downside in the green country moving average at a Richard Pink. I said, oh, 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 this could be a serious move down. No, I think I'm seeing I'm seeing isolated buying come in. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs. And join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I wrote just asked about a couple of stocks. There we go. Apple, if Apple are trading at 186.79 today, is able to trade for 35 to 40 minutes above 187.50, it could get very close to the high that was made yesterday of 188.05 and then it could go to D and then I think you've got to be a little bit careful but there's no technical indication at all yet on Apple that it should pull back other than have a little bit of a, a, a digestive phase uh, at this stage but I'm watching the doji possible candle at, at leg D in the weekly chart a uh, question came in Amazon Amazon we're looking at here Amazon is trading there's your peak D uh, potential so a lot but the weekly charts are still very strong so that's what I'm saying I think this is a digestive phase that's going to impact the daily charts a little bit the weekly charts but the weekly charts of stocks that have been really strong that can continue for a while longer a question came in about where was the whoops 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 um, yes uh, could I could I look at this so Disney so Disney is pulling back. It doesn't look great. One that I have liked for a long time, it's holding well, but it's still not giving me any big indication. Is six, which is Six Flags Entertainment themes. I'm watching this one closely because this is where it should do well, but I believe that they, they're just, they're not very 
they're not very diligent in, uh, in their bookkeeping and everything. You're not saying anything's wrong. It's just that they don't, they don't manage the company as well as they should. So, okay, and another thing I wanted to just show you right here, INDU. Yes, the Dow is up. It's up and it's trying to challenge the next level, which will be the 33,890 uh, resistance. I'm watching this closely. I think that we've got a bounce coming here and that bounce could go a little bit further and then we've got to test everything. Don't forget, folks, we've got a sale going on right now here at T uh, Tiger Financial Network. This is going to be a fantastic couple coming up. Choosing stuff that maybe you've missed, or maybe you have to be looking at. This is what people for the uh, OP call newsletter, uh, trying to get add back to positions that we had to have gained. Uh, that's, that's a good time to be doing it. Have a wonderful.